Hey, Jeff Love here from Alternative Heating and Supplies again. We're going to be talking about how to install a plate exchanger on top of a domestic hot water tank this time. And this is another big call that I get a lot of questions about it. But this is so simple, um, it should be pretty quick to show you. And once I give you a visual, everybody it clicks and everybody gets it. What I have here is I'm going to be using a 20 plate heat exchanger. Now a lot of people ask me, how do you know what size plate exchanger to install in your domestic hot water tank? Simple rule of thumb is, Two to three people in one house will determine a 10 plate. A 10 plate heat exchanger is enough for two or three people. When you get into a full size family, anywhere from four, five, six people in the house, I immediately recommend the 20 plate. It'll have plenty of power, it'll have good re regenerative nature to it, so it'll heat up the domestic hot water a lot faster. And this is the cold water side, so cold water coming in. Um, obviously the plate exchangers are installed, I didn't want to show you how to screw everything together. I'm sure you all can figure all that how to do it. This is your hot water side. So you're gonna mount your, your plate exchanger on the cold water side. And I'll explain to you why. It's actually quite simple. I call it a thermal pressure siphon. And I'll explain it in detail in just a minute. So all you're gonna do is the water line will come in and you're gonna just cut it. You're gonna mount it. You're gonna do a, a 90 here going into the plate exchanger. And I always recommend unions. Now you gotta use a lead free uh, copper and also brass. In this case, in this application, I carry brass, lead-free brass, so I use brass here to give you this example. So you're gonna put a union here, and then you come down in through the plate exchanger, and then again, another lead-free union, and then back into the, plate, uh, into the domestic hot water tank. These plate exchangers are stainless steel. Uh, the plate exchangers that I sell are also 40% heavier than the plate exchangers else that are out there on the market. The plate exchangers can be used for many different applications, anything from cooling or heating and warming up diesel to exchanging heat between polyurethane and, uh, and refrigerant and everything else. But the heat exchangers that I have made specifically for me is made for the wood boiler application. So it's a much heavier grade of plate exchanger, which hurts my efficiency a little bit, but I'd rather have the longevity and the quality. And then instead of having to replace them every four to five years is what it seems like the other ones that I've come across are the less expensive or the lighter ones uh, that I've seen. So I went with a heavier grade and they should last you the lifetime of the boiler if not longer. So um, in this case the water flow is going to be coming in from the domestic hot water side this way into it. So the flow of the wood boiler is going to go the opposite direction. You're trying to create a cross flow difference. Okay, You get more heat exchange that way. So the boiler coming in identified with the red pipe is going to come in through the bottom up flow and then out and return to the boiler or to your next heating system. And what will happen here is the reason and how this works is a thermal pressure siphon. So what happens here is this water coming in from the boiler is anywhere in the ballpark of 170 to 180 degrees. So it's heating up the water in this plate exchanger which is coming in roughly 55 degrees, give or take a couple degrees depending on what zip code you're from. So the water in here is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. So it's building up pressure because when heat when water is heated, it expands, and, it, and of course, being in this pipe, it's building pressure because this tank is also pressurized. That's how it gets water to your tap. So the water in here is getting hotter and hotter, and the pressure is building. The tank, the water in there is naturally cooling. That's why it's covered with so much insulation. So the pressure in this is dropping. So the pressure between this and the water jacket in here and the water in here, the two pressures are going to neutralize. And when you have that natural neutralization, the water temperature equals out. So that's how the thermal pressure siphon works, if that makes sense. So once again, the water in here heats up, builds up pressure. The water in here is slowly but surely cooling. And those two will neutralize at the same PSI or pressure, which is about the same temperature. You're going to get this tank at about 130 degrees with, again, no pump, no circulation. It's going to use the thermal pressure siphon to do it if it's installed correctly. The most important thing is that you've got to make sure you're using a copper, a good grade copper on the, on the domestic hot water side or a lead free brass. You got to use these things because this is water that's now going to be entering your domestic hot water system, possibly drinking it, and you're going to be bathing in it. So make sure you get good quality brass. We can we have brass and we sell it. 
Another common question that we get a lot is, do you heat the domestic hot water first or do you heat the boiler first or the hot air furnace first? The answer is you're always going to go to the domestic hot water first. And the reason why is if you're taking a shower and you get a couple degree difference in your shower, you're going to know immediately. If your wife gets it, you're going to hear about it. <laughs> so make sure you go to the domestic hot water first. When you go to your boiler after this, if the temperature house is off a degree, you won't even notice in the hot air system. But once you're done with the shower and you're taking a lot of heat from the, the loop, from the wood boiler or the, uh, uh, any con traditional coal boiler, or any other boiler system, it will catch up and get the hot air system. So I'll back up here and go one more time. So the water coming in from the wood boiler, coal furnace, boiler, any kind of boiler system you have with alternative energy or any boiler, you're gonna come in, you're gonna hit the domestic hot water first. Then from there, you're gonna come out and you're gonna to go to your boiler, your hot air furnace, or any other conventional heating system that you have, and then back to your wood, coal, or alternative energy boiler. And that's really all you have to do. That's how simple these things are to install. And the nice thing is, is when, they're, when they're not being used, the water will just throw, flow right through your uh, plate exchanger into your domestic hot water tank, and the tank will work as it was before it was installed. There's nothing you need to do. The plate exchanger will actually heat up the tank a little bit warmer than the tank is set for. So what will happen is the tank will never really turn on its coil system. Only will turn on its coil system once you stop using your boiler. And that applies if your boiler is at about 180 degrees. If you're running your boiler a little cooler than that, the coils inside this might be turned on. Okay, but that's all there is to it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up at the bottom. If you have any suggestions or areas that you don't understand you'd like to see a video on, please make a comment below. Let us know if there's anything else we could do to help you. And that's what we're here for. Check us out, Alternative Heating and Supplies. Thank you and have a great day.